So we have some breaking news. The man charged with vandalizing the Toronto Cenotaph, the very cenotaph dedicated to Canada's veterans, was not a social justice warrior or a radical leftist or even just some random troll. Rather, it was a staunch supporter of Don Cherry and a staunch enemy of the quote-unquote leftist cancel culture. That's who vandalized a solemn remembrance of veterans. Because so many people would assume that this sort of vandalism would be for people who are quote-unquote against the military or quote-unquote against veterans. The very people that Don Cherry stereotyped on national TV and was the reason that he lost his job. But at the end of the day, the man who did it, did it primarily for Don Cherry. This vandalism was in honor of Don Cherry and his words and in the reaction to those words from the quote-unquote PC left. At the end of the day, Thomas Zog went on social media and made an open declaration that the reason he wrote Ye Broke Faith was that Canada broke faith with veterans when we have associated ourselves with communist forms of speech policing, and that when we fired Don Cherry and we've embraced the PC culture, and when the media and social elites have conspired to fire those who stand with veterans, we've broke faith with those sacrifices of the men and women gone by, the people who fought in the Second World War, for instance. We've become the totalitarians, supposedly that they fought against. This is absurd, and it goes to show just how nonsensical many, if not most, of the Don Cherry supporters are. Don Cherry, what he did, harmed the military. It doesn't matter what Don Cherry did in the past to support soldiers. Don Cherry's remarks tried to create a deep division, tried to say that there are good Canadians, aka small-town white Canadians, and bad slash disloyal Canadians, aka big city types, the you people, the people who come here, disproportionately racialized and immigrant. Don Cherry did that. Don Cherry broke faith when he tried to split Canada between the good and bad, between the old and new, those sorts of divisions that caused so much harm during that Second World War and in the years leading up to it. That's the legacy here. Don Cherry broke faith, and all his supporters broke faith when they chose to side with a man who attacked the real historical legacy of Canada's military, as well as the contemporary reality of Canadian society. And it's a delicious irony that the people who quote-unquote support the military and honor the sacrifices of the veterans, and maybe are the ones who are most likely to wear the poppy, feel it's their right to go and violate a monument dedicated to veterans of this country, all veterans, not just veterans who are right-wing nationalists, not just veterans who use the words you people, not just veterans who are jingoistic warmongers, not just veterans who embrace a Fox News slash Breitbart slash rebel media view on politics, not just people like Thomas Zog. That monument belongs to all veterans of this country, And insofar as it's a tool for us to remember, it belongs to all Canadians. And no one should use that monument as a political statement, especially for such a regressive and anti-Canadian message. Now, you're going to hear from a lot of folks that this was a false flag operation or that this was an agent provocateur, that this was a secret move by the left to plant somebody to vandalize the monument and claim they actually did it for right-wing reasons to allow the left the moral superiority of protecting veterans' monuments. You're going to hear that. You're going to hear that conspiracy. But this is an open and shut case as far as I'm concerned. The man vandalized the statue. He disrespected veterans because he was mad that Don Cherry got fired. Don Cherry, who was never a veteran, supposedly is so important to the value of Canada's military history, that one man being fired for saying an openly discriminatory thing, rightfully so, he was fired for the right reasons, he should have been fired long ago, frankly, is worth disgracing the memory of hundreds of thousands of veterans from almost every walk of life in this country, from different ethnicities, from different backgrounds. Some of them would be called you people to this day. That's their monument. It's not Don Cherry's. It's not Thomas Zog. It doesn't belong to the alt-right. It belongs to all of us. So let this be known that when people on the right try to make a claim, try to own military legacy, try to own respect for our troops, 
try to own, you know, remembrance for the sacrifices of the generations gone by. Remind people of this moment because this effort here is emblematic of the hypocrisy of many of Canada's right wing movements and individuals. It's never been about the veterans. It's about using veterans and using military legacies to serve their contemporary political goals. That's what it's always been about. And that's why it's so perfectly illustrative that a man who wants to use contemporary political debates about the anti-free speech left would take it so far as to vandalize a monument to veterans of all backgrounds in this country.